Okay, you're up. Yeah, um, you won the ball game. Obviously, a, a lot of things to clean up. But the, the one thing that uh, really, really proud of the guys and, and one of the guys is on the Zoom is, you know, some of our big time players stepped up, made some plays towards the tail end of the game. But we've got some run things to, to clean up, um, which we will. Uh, a couple of alignment mistakes um, that, you know, obviously, you know, give Zach and his crew a, a lot of credit in terms of their offense and what they do. And uh, they're talented, um, but we found a way and that was to me, a really good sign of, of a good ball club is, you know, regardless, hang in there, keep throwing punches, and then make some critical plays uh, to, to close out the game. So very happy with that. Okay, uh, please raise your hands, and uh, I'll, I'll call on you. We'll start with Ryan Karchi. Morning, Todd. Uh, could you, because we haven't seen your defense in, in action at USC, could you give us an idea of – in terms of just like assignment wise, uh, what was working, maybe what wasn't necessarily working in terms of what you want the defense to look like? Well, it's going to be multiple. Um, and it's really, you, you'd like to try to create negative yardage plays to get them into third and very predictable. And then, you know, you'd like to see this thing probably about 32%, 30%. That's normally where it's at on third down. So you can get off the, off the field. Um, you know, the, some of the stuff that happened to us on, on a couple of the edge plays were just communication, you know, and coming really from day one install. So it wasn't like it was something uh, exotic or something that, um, you know, that, that's not correctable. So it's going to be multiple. It, it was, um, we, we tried to attack Jaden, you know, and, 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 and try to, you know, limit that part of it, but then we kind of settled into some of the stuff that, you know, that is our best run defense. And, um, you know, there's, we got to get better. That's probably the biggest thing that we can tell it. So it's been emphasized, but you know, you watch the tape and it's all correctable stuff and uh, it just goes back to some communication and, and just, uh, you know, uh, doing some better things. That's all. What was it that Marlon did particularly well in that game? Well, he made the plays to settle us down. And we always talk about, you know, sometimes you get on the ropes a little bit and you're you're searching. Um, and, you know, the, the big time guys step up and, and, and make the plays to settle people in or just make explosive. I thought his one play, uh, I think it was a tailwind. It was like a, a late third down <clears throat> where he just – he beats a blocker and, and, and makes a critical stop on the QB. And th those plays, that's the expectation – because these guys are very seasoned. So, you know, some of the younger guys are didn't, you know, that don't have a lot of game reps, you know, if they, if they're in the spots they're supposed to be and they're making the plays they're supposed to, to make, you're, you're happy with that. But when you get guys like Marlon, you know, guys like Drake, um, you know, you're looking for two or three plays that are outside the norm to go along with the plays that they should make. And, and that's when you have really special players like that, that's what they should do. And that really helps you. Okay, go to uh, Ryan Young. Uh, Todd, there's a lot of focus on the linebackers in the preseason. What was your evaluation of those guys on Saturday? Yeah, they're okay. You know, we, we got to get better. You know, I, I have no problems with with saying that because uh, I coach the position. Um, got to do a better job of, of getting those guys to play faster and more physical and, and, and more violent. Um, so they know, I mean, we, we went into that room and anytime you give up the amount of running yards that, that we did, I mean, that is the position that you got to get, uh, you got to get that stuff corrected. So it's, it's all of us, you know, I got to do a better job coaching. We got to do a better job of getting off of blocks and separating and um, and we will. I, I can promise you that. Is there one primary emphasis? Was it positioning, or is it something specific? No, it was there? just a, a collection of stuff. You know, some some just, uh, you know the part. Uh, there was some some fit up issues, game, but it's all correctable stuff. You know, the the ones that we got hit on. Um, we actually had two guys on the same side with just alignment mistakes, so that that gives you zero chance. But uh, there's an expectation, um, you know, and, and we're, you know, obviously, um, you know, uh, from a standpoint of talent level, it's, it's there. I've, I've got to do a better job of getting these guys 
um, to play faster. And I, I have no problem with saying that. Uh, let's go to Antonio. Todd, what did you think about Drake Jackson's performance and that kind of hybrid role for him? Yeah, it was good, um, you know, because it was a little bit concerned. He didn't get a, a ton of live reps, but he's such a dynamic player. I was a little bit concerned going in from a tackling standpoint, but he's such a good athlete. Um, he, he did a really good job, you know, and it's to me, it's um, – he, he's a special player. we got to be mindful of the stuff that we're doing or asking him to do. Um, but, you know, the play that he makes, you know, Marlon makes that critical play on, on the third down, but the play he makes at the end of the game is just, you know, it's, those are the, you know, the two to three plays that the, the really special players make. And, you know, he, he beats the tackle clean, forces the, the, the throw fast, and it's an incomplete. And to me, that's recruiting. You know, you're in this area, and there's, there's some really good, high school players in this area that, you know, the top guys and you get those guys that come to your program, they, they make us all look great. So, I mean, it, he did some things out there that were, were pretty special. Uh, Adam Grossbart. Todd, there were a couple moments uh, where Jaden was able to get out of the pocket and make some plays with his feet. Were there any common denominators in terms of the, like how those plays broke down? Yeah, there, there you know, when you get, players that to me that can make throws and can run you know you just have to be mindful there's a little bit of a schematics into it because at the end of the day if you bring four and they got six back there to block it's not good numbers for you especially if you're covering the heck out of everybody so uh, I think the the one that he hit on us um, later on I thought they did a really good job of coming back and picking up one of our pressures um and then he escaped out. So you just have to be mindful of that. And I think, you know, you, you look towards the tail end of the game, kind of our intent was to kind of, you know, bring enough guys that we could, we could at least go six for six on them and, and, and force them to throw the football. So that's a little bit of, um, you know, when you get a really elite athlete back there that can throw the football, um, it's tough. You can say what you want to say. You can stay in rush lanes. You can do all that. But when somebody's grabbing you up and you're trying to tackle a dynamic athlete, it's, it's hard to do. So that really, in my opinion, that kind of falls on the coordinator to kind of figure it out and what you need to do to stop them. And then initial thoughts on Grant Cannell and Arizona offense. Yeah, it's pace. So, you know, it's it's something that's unique. We go from a, a shift trade team that's in the huddle, not really in the huddle, but the kind of a sugar huddle to press the gas, you know, 24-7. So uh, it's, it's different. It's kind of unique to go back to back on teams like that. So, you know, we're going to have to, you know, get to the ball and, and, and be fast in terms of our assignments and our alignments. And then we know that they're going to try to run the football after after they saw that. So we got to stop the run to, to begin with. And we know balls are going out in the perimeter. So uh, unique situation, you know, first time on the road too with with this crew. And um, but I know we're excited. I we know that we can play much much better than we did. Um, end of the day, we won the ball game, and let's move on to the next one. But um, they're a space team. You know, they're going to get people the football, dynamic guys. Um, get them in space and, and try to run away from you. Uh, let's jump to shotgun. Hey, Todd, did, did you change your game plan at all after Frank Darby went out? Uh, did you decide to play a little bit more uh, man coverage on the outside then? Yeah, but you know, in the it wasn't it wasn't a little bit of, about Frank. It, it's what ended up happening during that game is we kind of want to. Uh, a front and coverage versus the run game because you could see what their intent was to do. They were going to try to cut down the clock and, but towards the tail end of the game, absolutely. You know, it's um, when have some experience like Max's experience, Chris's experience. So, you don't have that you, you don't sit there as a play caller and, and necessarily worry about the outside and our intent towards the tail end of the game was to make sure that Jay didn't beat us with his legs and um, and and take our chances on the outside with what some older guys on, on some younger guys. So it came into play a little bit more, you know, towards the tail end of the game that it did initially in the beginning. And how did you feel that the, those corners played, you know, you put them on an island a lot. 
Yeah, they did. They did a good job. You know, they were aggressive. They got up in there, you know, but it, it's like, uh, like I said before, and it's um, their, their coach is a, a, an extremely confident guy. I think the guys are playing with a lot, a lot of confidence right now, but you know, it's, there's a long season. So, but uh, you know, if you're talking about the game specifically, I thought they went up there and they challenged guys and, and they stuck with them, which was really good. I didn't see, I, I thought during the game that there was not one time where you, as a play caller, you sat there and say, Ooh, that guy got, got by us. And that, that could have been ugly. You felt pretty confident. So when you have that play on the outside, it makes the game so much easier to call. And that's, you know, that's the one thing that, you know, that I told Tay was like, Hey man, that's that's a really good job collectively as a group because you know sometimes as a coordinator, you sit there and you, and you need to get stuff done. Like for us, it was stop the run game, but you know, you put guys out there one on one and somebody gets beat, and now you're kind of in between. But I never felt at one point during the game that those guys needed help. Okay, let's go to Ryan Young. I know you've got some player questions here. Uh, Marlon, that might be the best game we've seen you play. Is there something about this scheme that uh, frees you up to do more, or did you just kind of feel that you had to be that guy for this defense this year? Um, yeah, like I think it's a little bit of both. Um, it's my junior year, so I felt like I got to step it up a little bit, and then credit to coach to to the coaches. Like uh, they had a they had us moving around a lot, so we weren't just playing like a base defense the whole game. So that was pretty good too. And for Parker, um, coming into this preseason, did you think you had a chance to win that job? What was your mentality? And also, what's your history with onside kicks? Have you had a lot of work with that, or was that just a best-case scenario Saturday? Um, you know, going going into the season, um, you know, I just tried to just compete my best and just hit my ball. Um, that was the mindset I had throughout the entire fall camp. Um, and back back to the onside kicks, I was, that was my first um, – you know, in-game onside kick. So um, I'm, I'm just really glad everything went well. Uh, Ryan Karchi. Wylan, where do you feel like your game has in, improved the most, just generally over the course of this past offseason? Uh, I feel like kind of my passion has gone a little better. Um, thanks to Coach Big and, like, his technique techniques that he's been teaching our group. Um, but, but again, like we got to do a better job at stopping the run. And that's what we've been working on this week, uh, preparing for Arizona. Antonio? Parker, can you describe what that moment was like when you were named the starter, when you found out uh, you won that job? It was, it was honestly a, a, a pretty crazy moment. Um, you know, coming in as a, as a freshman and, and winning the job was was really surreal. But, um, you know, I just try to main, maintain, like, be calm and, you know, just focus up for the game. That was, that was my mentality after. And what was your mindset as you were getting ready for that onside kick um, on Saturday and, you know, what you wanted to do with it? Gosh, I, I honestly, like, it, that was such a just – crazy intense moment I, I can't even tell you like what was what was going through my through my head it, it was just you know just practice repetition just do what do what we did in practice that's what I had going uh back to Ryan Young Todd is, is there more and more we're going to see from your defense as weeks go on and you get more time with the guys that you know it's kind of common I guess maybe the come out a little simpler the first time you haven't really seen them in action Yes, um, there is some stuff towards the tail end that we, you know, we have a package itself, but in, inside of that, you kind of select the stuff that you want to do for the game. So there is more, more to it. But, um, you know, when you just, it's just very unique, you know, having a first game where I think, you know, you sit there and there's a lot of unknowns and I'm sure there was a ton of unknowns for Arizona State coming into it. So you know, they're, they're a unique offense. Um, so you're trying to be mindful of how much you do, but there is some more that, um, that we can do. It just depends on what type of offense we're playing. So, but it's really the, the package itself is in, um, we probably used about 70 to 75% of it on Saturday. Um, but there's a handful more stuff that we can, we have available that we didn't use. So, 
we'll see where it plays. If it, if it fits to, to be able to stop them, we'll use it. If it doesn't, then we'll continue to do the stuff that we're doing. And then everywhere you've been, uh, rush defense has kind of been the hallmark of your defenses. Is that a stat you take personally when? Oh, yeah, for, for sure. You know, it's, uh, you know, when when you're giving up that many rushing yards, that's that's not a good thing with with us. So it's, uh, it's one thing, uh, you know, when you have a dynamic quarterback that maybe scrambles and does that stuff, but I'm, they're not talking about those things. Those happen, you know. I've competed against, you know, Lamar and, and Murray and those guys, and, you know, you put that to the side because you – you better pick your poison on it because they can throw every ball, you know, but the, just a traditional tailback running game. And if you're not doing a good, you have no chance of, of playing elite defense because nobody will throw the ball on you. So they'll just run it. And you, it's really hard to screw up a, a run play. You know, you, you have to find somebody, you have to throw it. They got to catch it. So in the past game, it's, you know, there's are some variables to it, but that that's where our emphasis is going to be this week is you know, let's make sure that, that we stop the run game and um, and then, you know, obviously when you get an opportunity to put pressure on a quarterback, we put pressure on quarterback. Uh, let's jump to Mark Culkin. Coach, um, you, you were talking about, you know, playing these RPO styles and up-tempo. Are there certain techniques you can teach the defenders to, to train their eyes to, to watch the ball better when it's in the backfield? Well, it's, it's really not that. It's really the assignment part of, of, you know, the guys that are part of the core of the formation. So for these guys, we're going to see a decent amount of four receiver sets unless they change. Um, the five guys that are inside are the five guys that or six guys that we'll have inside also. So, I mean, that they'll be trained to see what's going on there. But the guys on the perimeter have to train their eyes to, to see the receivers. So it, it's um, – you know, when you start peeking inside, if you're an outside uh, contained player, that's when issues become. If you're a corner that starts peeking in to try to make plays, that's when people run by you. So this is very much um, kind of a throwing style of triple option. You know, you can run the ball, pull it with a quarterback or throw the ball in a relief on the outside. So it's very much a kind of assignment defense that you would uh, perform versus like a Navy or a triple option team that you make make sure that you see your keys. So um if you're close to the ball, obviously, you know, part of the quarter formation like Marlon would be is he's worried about, you know, the nose of the or, or the guard or the uh, center of the guard. But the guys at linebacker, same exact way. But those guys out in the perimeter have to really, really focus in because they can they can get you sleeping and then all of a sudden throw the ball on the outside or throw the ball down the field. Uh, Ryan Kirchie. Todd, Clay has more than once referred to you as a perfectionist. Is that kind of always been your general mode as a football coach? Well, I, I, I would hope that in, in this profession, especially if you get to a, uh, a job like this, um, that you would try your best to do everything at an elite level. Now, to be absolutely 100% on everything is, is probably not reality. But I, I just feel like, we're, we're pretty demanding in terms of what we our expectations of the players are. So you, you better bring your A plus game every day to work and you better give guys the, the knowledge of experience. Like I don't claim to be like, like super duper smart, but I do have a lot of years under my belt. So I always say like, I don't know how to play chess, but if you maybe play chess for 40 years, I'd probably get pretty good at chess. So it's, you know, that you got to come in with the right attitude. And I just go back to the players is like, if you're demanding excellence out of, out of somebody, you better bring it every day. And that's really at the end of the day, what we're, we're trying to get accomplished is give these guys every opportunity, whether it's fundamentals or techniques or schematics, uh, give them every opportunity to be successful because really at the end of the day, that's, that's why we coach. It's, we don't coach for, Anything outside. I know me personally, if Marlon can make a, a handful of plays like he did that are maybe schematics or something that Vic taught him, to me, that fires me up. I, I want to see guys have success. And, um, but we, we have to bring it every day. And that's, and that's probably the perfection part of it is, is trying to get to that level and having enough gas to do it through the season. Shotgun. 
Todd, how did you feel like you guys handled their emotions and shifts? I think it was probably 50, 60 percent of the plays. That yeah. Uh, well, when we got when we had guys on the opposite sides of each other, it was we were OK. But, you know, we had a handful of plays that, you know, it's just it's first ball games it's uh you know you train a certain way and um and you're hoping that you know when you go to get on the field that you just stay what you're training and there was a couple plays out there that we kind of just kind of lost our minds so you know and, and when you watch the tape and you think first ball games you think about I don't make excuses for it but I really believe that um you know getting three or four weeks in and not having the spring football you know I I that could have helped us on some of these things, but let's give Zach and, and his staff some credit because that's what they do, you know, and just like we, we did some things out there that are, that are unique and, you know, and, and they sit there and, and give us credit. Let's give those guys some credit because, you know, that's that offense which shift trades and motions with a mobile quarterback with some tailbacks that can run the football and, you know, and, and to have some outside threats, that's, that's a good little offense. So, um, you know, all, all correctable stuff. So I, I think anytime you go into a meeting room, uh, and this has been my experience with this, and, and you put film on and you say, like, this is a hard play, but you're sitting there telling a kid, like, hey, you, you need to make this play. They're, you know, But when you're giving up plays because misalignments or just simple technical stuff, it's – and I, I – I loved our mindset. You know, when we were at in the linebacker meeting room, it was like, I'll, I'll get, I'll get this right. I promise you. There was no, you know, palms up or point fingers. And that's a really, really good sign um, for I care and I'm going to get this stuff correct. And I was the same way. I came into that room and I got to do a better job and, and we will, I promise you. And then I was going Shot. We have time for just a couple more questions, so let's share the wealth here. Uh, Kyle Kensing. Uh, yeah, this one's for uh, for Marlon. Uh, you know, you guys go down by two scores and kind of have your backs against the wall to a certain extent. What do you feel like contributed to forcing the punt there late in the game, and then the forcing them out on downs? Uh, you know, when all they need is a field goal to to win. Was it a sense of urgency, or did you feel like you all had just kind of maybe settled into the you know that first game a little bit by that point? Yeah, our, like our group did, our, our defense did a good job of like not giving in. Like we still wanted to go out there and play ball, and, and that's exactly what we did. Um, like credit to all our guys and like just keeping the energy up on the sideline, and our coach is also giving them energy, like to just go out there and keep playing, and we didn't give up. <laughs> And was there a noticeable learning curve that you felt like over the course of the game to any sort of extent? Um. I mean, just we got to just do a better job of stopping the run. Um, like Coach said, uh, just like little things that like getting out, out of our gap and stuff like that. But like he said, we'll get it fixed by Saturday. Thank you. Uh, Ryan Young, one question here. Yeah, Todd, there didn't seem to be a ton of uh, rotation on the defensive line. Was that game flow or is that just kind of what you're comfortable with right now personnel wise? It is. Um... How you practice around here is is going to be how many reps you get. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, uh, and a little bit has to do with kind of the pace of the game too. As this is a little bit of a kind of a sugar huddle operation, so plays are going deep into it. But um, we've kind of talked about this going into this. Is it's not going to be participation awards and you know, what you put on film. And, and here's the cool part about it is every night after practice, we sit down and we watch every rep of every play that we have. And there's, there's no, um, you know, favoritism. There's no backside meetings, none of that stuff. So the way you practice is the amount of plays that you're going to get. So you practice your tail off, you're, you're going to be playing on, on Saturdays. And, and if you don't, it's going to be limited. So I think that's the we're, we're trying to stay very consistent in terms of our message, um, so we can get better throughout the year. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to have to cut it off here. I know Coach has some meetings. And players have some class. So uh, a couple of quick reminders to the media: tomorrow morning at eight, we have Coach Hell, uh at. Uh,
one o'clock, uh, the Pac-12 Basketball Media Day uh, has Andy Enfield and Ethan Anderson. Because of that, we're going to cancel our Friday Andy Enfield uh, presser. Uh, so you can get your basketball um, info tomorrow uh, with, with Andy. Um, and with that, uh, we'll have a great rest of the day, everybody. Marlon Parker, thanks for joining us. Coach Orlando, thank you. Great job. Uh, we'll, we'll see everybody tomorrow.